Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Mr. Blubberbutter, and welcome to Chester Cornfield, Old Timey Detective. I know nothing about this at all. I just used it on my desktop, and so I don't remember when I got it. I just decided to go ahead and play it, and this is it. The audio is really loud. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I had to turn it down some, so we'll just... Can I turn the music down? Yeah. I don't care much about music in games. Well, no, that's not true, but especially when I'm recording, it could be a little distracting. The speech volume's a little high, let's just... Okay, now let's try. Let's see what's going on here. Welcome to 1906, the apex of America's golden age. <laughs> Freedom reigns as the citizens of Old York City rejoice for... Soup kitchens, knee-high bathing suits, and baseball without shoes. What? Mighty motor carriages storm the streets. Mummies are the wave of the future. And President Jaime Hausenheimer wins a fifth term in office as he leads our noble country in the war against horses. What? what is going on? Sadly, it's also a period of unrest, as crime hits an old time low and police grow inept at upholding the law. At times like these, it's up to the private sector to remind the world what America stands for. Do I have to stage crimes? Street safe, you need an old fashioned man with an old timey sense of justice. You need. Chester Cornfield. Hello, Chester. Come quick. I'll be needing your help. Constable Greenwald. How may I assist my favorite blue coat this fine morn? There's been a poisoning at Mary's chicken wagon <laughs> and I don't feel like doing all the work. You need to get down here and solve the case for me. Goodness gracious, not the chicken wagon. Sit tight, old boy. Cornfield will be there. Look at me split. Okay. So, point and click game. Let's turn the speech volume up a little bit. That might have been a mistake. Alright, I, um... Hmm. Scotch. What better way to start a morning than with fancy man scotch straight from the bottle? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and take that scotch. Better take this on the road. Wouldn't no! want to sober up to... <laughs> my, my wife is playing Paper Mario in the background. I'm sorry. I've ruined sorry. far too many suits you. carrying around my I filthy ashtrays. Telephone. Who's this telephone? The telemophoner is a miracle of modern science. Through the magic of its crank-based dialing system, I can speak to any of the nine people in the city who own one. I'm so glad you're one of who the... Who shall I call? Uh... Why don't we call this guy? For whatever reason. Hello? Willie, my stalwart Boy Scout assistant. Where the devil are you? Sorry, sir. I meant to call a sick at it. My boy, I pay you two penny shavings a week to run errands. How am I supposed to deliver old-timey justice if you're sick at home with the pox? The nasty bit flu. I think it is. Can't get out of bed. <laughs> you don't Very sound well. sick to me. Get some rest and drink plenty of scotch. But no, I expect that's you to bad advice. Here first thing tomorrow morning. Aye, sir. Bless you, sir. It also doesn't take just one day to get over the flu. So there's that, too. It's a newspaper Ah, sale. my first case. Nobody in this town swaps heads on a dinosaur skeleton when Chester Cornfield's on the job. Okay. And a uh, portrait of myself. Not conceited Why, at all. My granddaddy, Reginald oh. P. Cornfield, the original old-timey detective. Back in the day, he brought Boston's tea terrors to justice, defeated a ring of donkey smugglers, and helped President Lincoln land on the moon. What? What is going on <laughs> in this timeline? Certificates. Sure, let's look at these, these two certificates. These two pieces of paper certify both my investigating authority and right to deliver the old one-two on miscreants. Okay, well, let's just... Yeah, let's grab the barb. I'll take out the trash there. when I'm off the clock. Besides, those... Okay, well, let's go. Okay, so this is an interesting... Interesting game. Not quite what I expected. This soup kitchen. I'm here, Greenwald. Where's the fire? Oh, no, no, not not so loud. Why did you have too much to drink? <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh boy, I can't even. Hey, um... Gats, man, are you sober on the job? Last night's bachelor party at the pub took a lot out of me. I, I don't even remember who was getting married. It was a rowdy night indeed, but that's no excuse to forget your morning scotch. I know, I know, I'm a disgrace to the uniform. 
But alas, we're wasting valuable time. What seems to be the problem? What is with right, this time? Well, Father Vincelli here came in the morning for chicken and eggs, and then shortly after eating, broke out in yellow spots and started coughing. So they called the doctor, who called the police, to hold Miss Mary for questioning. I keep telling them the press was sick already. That's all right, my child. I forgive you. Doesn't sound like a criminal offense. What mystery needs solving? Well, the thing is, it seems Miss Mary here has a slight history working around people who fall mysteriously ill. And you suspect she might be poisoning them on purpose? I suspect she might be one of them serial killers. Very well, what do you need to close the case? As usual, weapon, motive, and opportunity. We need to determine if Father Vincelli is really poisoned, prove Miss Mary has done this before, and disprove her claim that she was already sick. See if I can do this okay. Uh, let's go talk to the people first. It seems like the best thing to do. It's Miss Mary, rival chicken chef to my darling Betty Sue. Oh, so we don't like her. Okay, that's oh, not I how you're supposed to question Father people. Shelley. I don't hate him. He's a very nice man with a lovely service on Sunday. And God loves you, my child. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, if we're going to go with the crazy detective, let's go all out. You were sent by the devil to kill the heart of our community. Nonsense. I'm the one who called the doctor. A likely front for your devious actions. <laughs> she doesn't like me. I'm watching you. Okay, let's Mary, just keep going. how dare you poison your customers? This man's a staple of the religious community. Do you realize how damaging this will be to your business? I did not poison this man. Even I'm heavily reconsidering eating here again. You only eat from Betty's poultry pantry. That woman undercooks all her chicken and doesn't wash her hands. She's a culinary menace to the community. A so I'm getting a set. A is a small price to pay for the most scrumptious of butter wrapped drumsticks. Her cooking will kill you. This promise. So Betty was the one who did this. Is what I'm calling right now, even though I don't. Go anywhere. Let's just start at the top, I guess. Can I offer anything to ease your suffering? I have a gun. I'm sorry, I should not make jokes about me fuzzies. <laughs> Were you feeling under the weather earlier? Nah. I recall seeing you at last night's party, but you seemed spot free then. Did you perhaps ingest something sketchy between then and now? Hmm. Yes. It's not a reliable witness. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Poor man's delirious. I hope I don't no, ruin this for anyone, but the mouthing is odd. I desperately need some answers. Does the Bible have <laughs> it's any? not quite how this Not's works. Guy, puppy's belly would make much happy the puppy. Yeah. I meant something more relevant to this case. Ah, <laughs> see, Ecclesiastes seven ten. Ecclesiastes. What? Sure, let's dance do. naked under the scarlet moon and rejoice. See, Jesus wishes you many hugs. You are a bad pastor. I shall now go bring your attacker to justice. Go in peace, my child. You're a weird person. Doctor, let's talk to you. Bloodwig, my diabolical Alamond half-brother. What the devil are you doing here? Chester, my loving brother. Hello. ex rodeo clown, the crime scene. Don't tell me you're the doctor. Yeah. Now I have my license and I get to be doctor today. Heaven oh, help us all. Hooray! Why haven't you fixed Father Vincelli yet? There was a traffic accident on the way over. All my medical supplies were destroyed in the crash. But you survived. And yet you survived. <laughs> I can't perform a diagnosis without the proper tools. Fortunately, the diner has a first aid kit. Then why haven't you taken it? Because the priest made a little mess in there when he got sick. I don't want to sleep on the mess and ruin my trousers. You are a bad fair doctor. Enough, I suppose. No, I not fair enough. I my hand at securing the proper tools. I also need something to cover my mouth so I don't get sick. What evil lurks in your black, black heart? Oh, Chester, why do you hate me so? It's because you're blonde. I explain myself, you despicable canker blossom. 
Your sick, loathsome mind is a wicked web of depravity and demented schemes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I see now. Surely you jest. Um. Sure. Your hair is an unholy abomination and must be destroyed. <laughs> so funny. No, Don't not funny. My criticism. Okay. Nobody likes you, Chlodwig. Nobody likes you, Clodwig. I like him. I like him too. Bless you, Clodwig. <laughs> I'm on to you. Be gone from my sight. Okay, let's talk to the constable now. How do we diagnose Father Vincelli? Well, they, they called the a doctor. You might want to confer with him. Yeah, that didn't do any good. What proof have we that Mary's poisoned before? Just hearsay around the station. Sadly, we've nothing on file about her employment. You are a useless Why cop. Why you asked her yourself? I'd interrogate her myself, but I'm afraid she's a bit too hysterical for mine. She's not hysterical. It's nonsense. Modern medicine has disproven the existence of womanly hysteria, my good Oh, okay, man. at least... Why, thought. it's no more real than lady rabies or the non-German measles. Well, she's also quite surly. I rather think an old-timey interrogation might you be... You are a bad cop. Old-timey? Why, that's my specialty. How are we sure the priest wasn't already sick? Because he walked through the door with his left foot, scratched his nose, and passed the gas. That is how I know. Come again? It's an old wives' tale, Chester. Not another old wives' tale. Those always hold up in court. <laughs> if you can disprove her story, maybe we have a case. Otherwise, she has our potatoes in a windmill. Holy I'll hell. Speak to okay. Further on this. I don't know how. Quite okay, sure, why not? Well, let's just talk it? about this. The bachelor party. Aye, there was a there was a fair bit of rowdiness. Would have been grounds for arrest if I weren't been dancing on the tables with a lot of you. And I think I saw you kissing one of the dancing girls. The ladies love a man in uniform. You did a fair share of kissing as well, didn't you? Well, no woman alive can resist my dashing charms. I would never kiss anyone but my fair future cornfield, the lovely Miss Petty. Oh, she's a lovely lass indeed. You're lucky to have found each other, Chester. Perhaps we'll have another bachelor party in the near future, eh? We'll see, Greenwald, old boy. We'll see. Okay. This is speak again. such a weird game. I love it, actually. Let's go into the diner. Let's see what's in here. Oh, gosh. Messy floor. Why? Let's look at this messy Crossing floor. Crossing this floor shall require skill. Fortunately, I've acquired the art of Jim Quando during my journey. <laughs> Jim Quando. But I must be quick in finding <laughs> the proper path, lest I lose my balance in these trousers. Oh, what? Yeah. I shall return yet again after a brief visit to my chiropractor. <laughs> oh, this is such a good game. Okay. Let's go ahead and cross. I'd Might as well. A few hazards across this floor. It looks like is everything is covered Best in to remember crud. When not to step and when not to dawdle. Yeah. Uh-oh. That was a mistake. Blast it all! Now I have to go home and change my trousers. My allergies what? are flaring up near that window. I should best avoid it in the near future. The wind. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, game. I'm getting the real tired of it. Whoa! What's with the flag? It keeps track of the times yeah. I do it. There's I nothing there. That time. Just my luck that the cleanest spot on the floor is also the most treacherous. Oh gosh. I'm about to go beat up something. By which I mean something that's not human, so I do not cause any harm. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Okay, I did it. Success. This is a really good game. Acquired the proper medical supplies. Oh. Well, I want to see what else is in the diner. Oh, there's only in and out. I can go inside the movie theater. Uh. Yeah. As much as I appreciate watching a train depart the station, I mustn't pull myself away from the case at hand. Ah, I was gonna say that sounds like the best it's thing to do. Not another train movie. I couldn't even stay in the theater for ten of the first film's fifteen seconds. What? Th this is so okay. Whatever. Let's let's go over here. I shall now go bring your attacker to justice. I walked all the way up to him just to say that. Okay, let's go go treat him with the 
Oh, I, I forgot I had other things. Scotch. I need to give scotch to him. Leech it. Found a handkerchief. Or where'd the first aid kit go? I thought I got the first aid kit. Is it? Is it just leeches? It's just leeches, isn't it? From conception to gout to scurvy to dysentery, the noble leech backs down from no medical challenge. Yeah, I can tell you for a matter of fact that's actually not true, though. That's the funny thing about that. Were I to open it, all the leeches would escape. Okay, cool. Perhaps that's... you should leave that to the professionals. But he's not a perfect. Oh. I found you some medical supplies. Excellent. With these, I will have the patient diagnosed in no time. Yeah, he's going to be dead. You leave the better. Well. Why haven't you fixed Father Vincelli yet? I also need something to cover my mouth. Oh my gosh, man. Be gone from my sight. Here. Have a handkerchief. If I lend you my handkerchief, would you get on with the investigation? Ah, yes. Thank you, brother. Don't, Don't call, call me, me brother. Very well. I shall now inspect the patient. I have completed my exam. What Good did you find? You. He has, in fact, been poisoned. But this goes beyond mere food poisoning. What is it then? Out with it. The culprit is a rare contagious bacteria that incubates inside a living person. What? Vincelli could only have caught this illness from someone else. And not his food? Nine. The bacteria at this stage only transmits through saliva. So he was at the and party. Food. He kissed someone. I am not sick. Therefore, I am not responsible. Unless, as a carrier, you are immune to its effects and have been spitting on people's food. Have you been spitting on people's food? In any case, it seems we've reached our <laughs> diagnosis. Ta-da! Good job for climbing. Yes, good job. Go. Um, what was over here? Something, I thought. So, what do I have to say to you now? Oh. Be gone from my sight. Yes, you be gone. Boo. What else do I have at my disposal? Scotch. Let's give the scotch to him. Or let's talk to Father Vincelli first. Oh. I shall now go bring your attacker to justice. Go so I have to go talk to her. My child. Ah, your face is ugly. Um, okay. Tell me about this old wives' tale of yours. If a man enters a room with his left foot, scratches his nose and passes gas, he is sick. Father Vincelli did just that before eating. How okay. would one falsify your old wives' tale? There is one instance of an incorrect study. If a man looks at the sun and does not sneeze, then he is all right and the woman is wrong. What? Like an allergy to the sun? What is this witchcraft of which you speak? It is not witchcraft. It's called photic sneeze reflex. It is a sneeze triggered by light stimulation. That's actually a real thing. It affects approximately 30% of the population. Uh... Why are old wives so well versed in light stimuli studies? Got to put money on it. I'll spare you the embarrassments and dispel your claim here and now, as there's a perfectly good sun right up there, and I am clearly not. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Let's try looking at the sun again. Wrong. Blast this old wives' tale. There must be a safeguard of sorts against it. Okay. Well then. Um, no, the oh, sneeze thing is actually a real thing. I know people have that issue. Last week I was chef for Mayor Archibald Fritz. <laughs> I quit and opened my own chicken place because Betty's tastes like raw sewage. <laughs> Did you poison the mayor with your cooking as well? He sure. fell ill, but not from my cooking. I take much pride in hygienic food preparation. I saw him last week while solving the case of the smoking specter. We had jolly good laughs and even shared a cigar in good spirits. What else could have befallen the mayor? You're the detective. Why don't you call him and That's find an excellent out? point. Very well. Don't I? Give me his number and I'll ring him on the mobile phone. Five. 
Don't go anywhere. It's five. Okay. Scotch. Fancy man scotch. The only brand of gentleman's whiskey any man worth his mustache would be seen drinking in public. Yeah, okay. Cool, though. But, no. There we go. Give it to him. Here, Greenwald. This should puzzle you right up. Thanks, Chester, but... I'm gonna take it easy. I'm very much a lightweight when hungover. Don't want to go too over the edge. Okay. Did that open up any other options? No. Nope. We shall speak again. So I have to go call the mayor. Let me see if there's anything else in the diner. Does not look like. The American flag. That must be this week's flag. It seems we now pledge allegiance to the old star stripes and shredded wheat. Breakfast of champions. What? What is wrong with you? Whom shall I call? Let's do it. So I just bring it five times. Archie, old chum, it's your pal, Chester Cornfield. How fair you this fine morn? You sound Archie, horrible. Gracious man, are you sober? Five bottles. Only five bottles of scotch, you say? My word, Archie, you become a lightweight in your endeavors as mayor. I barely understand a word. I shall be quick then, Archie. Do you remember the housekeeper in your employ whilst we were solving the mystery of the smoking specter last week? One Mary Mushka? <coughs> he fell deathly ill shortly after. Can you describe the symptoms? <coughs> I see. Okay. Archibald, I fear my iron constitution prevents me from ever being blood enough to understand you. Fairly well, old chum. My threshold for spirits is too. Oh, I wanted to read that. I. I'll take a. Oh well, let's head back out the door, I guess. I've spoken to Mary's former employer. There we go. According to Mayor Frisk. That's all in part, and they were yellow in that portion of Amish Gallagher. Is that drunk speak? I'm afraid so. Hmm. Don't think I'd be much help interpreting in my current state. Hold up. Pass me that bottle again. Alright. See what happens. Now, uh, repeat that. This game is so quirky. I love it so much. I might not sound very excited. The mayor was coughing with yellow spots and pooped a blue collar. Why, that sounds mighty familiar. It's a coincidence the Presti did not poop. Oh, yes he did. Well, was it blue? <laughs> Just a little. Would you like to not see? Not really. N no, no, we'll sort that out later. But that settles that. Two out of three symptoms confirmed. There's clearly a connection. Good job, Chester. <laughs> Okay, cool. I got the one, but now, now what? What's the last thing I have? It truly wasn't really sick. Again. What, what did he say about that? How are we sure the priest wasn't already sick? Because he walked through the door with his left foot, scratched his nose, and felt. All right, so I have to prove. I oh, I need again. sunglasses. It's an old wives' tale. Not another old wife. If you can disprove her stuff, I'll speak to her. Okay, so I have to we trick her. What do I have here? I don't have any sunglasses, do I? Does anyone have sunglasses? I can't go any further. I wonder if I have any sunglasses in my office. Law book, history book, old wives tales. Ah! One of these might help my case. If you stick a penny nickel in your nose when someone whistles Yankee Doodle, you'll be unable to sneeze. I don't have a penny nickel. Okay. Let's just look at these since I they're all here. Carry it in my I don't need to refresh my skills just yet. I've already given ten miscreants cauliflower ear this week, and my knuckles could use a breather. Oh, gosh. I've already read this, front to back. I already know every story. Alright, so I need a nickel. Somehow. Okay. 
Maybe if I talk to him, he can get me bar one. Oh no, he's ill. Egad, Greenwald, you've fallen ill. I, I, I suppose it's my own fault. I've eaten six things off the ground since I got here. Perhaps we should move everyone present into quarantine until we get to the bottom of this. We could, but it's such a beautiful day out. Who wants to spend it in quarantine? You're an idiot. Not We're all gonna die, aren't we? As always, Greenwald, you may have doomed us all for the sake of a lovely day. The doctor's is sick, too. Can you whistle Yankee Doodle round the mountain for me? Sorry, I'm on break. On break from whistling? That's preposterous. You have a problem? You take it up with the Whistler's Union. Okay. We shall speak again. Let's talk to the sick doctor. Clodwig, you appear more diseased than usual. <laughs> yeah, I suppose the handkerchief did not help. I hope you learned your lesson about meddling in career paths you have no business pursuing. Maybe being a doctor isn't such a good idea after all. You don't say. Perhaps instead, I can become an old-timey detective. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen, you. though, is the funny thing about that. <laughs> Should I even bother asking if you can whistle for me? <laughs> yeah, I can. Would you like me to? On second thought, no. You'll probably whistle it backwards and summon the devil. That would be hilarious. Be gone from my sight. Can he whistle for me? Can you whistle Yankee Doodle around the mountain? See, si, see, si, of course. I need to put something in my mouth, which is going to get me sick. This is a horrible idea. Okay, finally found it. It's in the tip jar right over here. Or I assume it is. I'm rich. Rich, I tell ya. Okay. I could put this in my mouth and get sick too. Which I'm guessing is the point of all this. Now, I wonder what happens, because in theory, you could do all of this before you come down with the hair. If you read the book before you leave, grab the penny whistle just before going and grab anything. I wonder if you can do it before he gets sick. This six-cent lead coin is a shining testament to America's imperial economy. The penny nickel is now in my nose. And now I'm going to get sick. Alright, you whistle, please. Be gone from my sight. You whistle, please. Can you whistle Yankee Doodle around the mountain? See, si, see, si, of course. Alright. Now I can look at the sun. <coughs> Success! As you can see, I am sneeze free. That can't be right. What trickery is this? Trickery or not, I've falsified your claim. And, by your own admission, that should hold up in court. Thanks, Chester. I've concluded my investigation. So what's the verdict? I've determined that not only is Father Vincelli suffering from a highly contagious form of bacteria, but that Mary's former employer suffered from the same symptoms while she was in his employ. With the old wives' tale disproven, it's safe to say that Father Vincelli acquired the illness at this establishment. Most likely through Miss Mary, who has unknowingly carried this illness for months, or even years. Preposterous. My chicken wagon has the cleanest kitchen in the city. Preposterous, is it? Then how is it that everyone you meet falls ill will you're the model of good health? The fact fits, and I therefore conclude, madam, that as the healthiest person present, you are an immune carrier and must be quarantined. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't feel so well. Hold up oh, now, no faking it. Looks real enough to me, Chester. Then perhaps she's not as immune to this disease as we first imagined. Maybe there's someone you overlooked? Nonsense. <laughs> there is the only him. connection between everyone infected. In fact, Who I sneezed on her several times. Hold up, hold up. Chester, at last night's party, you didn't happen to share a drink with Barbara Vincelli, did you? Of course not. I merely helped him chew the crust off a disgusting sandwich he ordered. And did you also happen to share anything with the mayor during your case together last week? Why, in fact, we shared a cigar. I share everything with everyone. I even shared my raw chicken dinner with young Ward Williams, the poor sick little tyke. You sneezed on me with your nasty chicken bread. And gave me your scotch. And lent me your handkerchief. Come now, surely you don't think I'm... I'm... 
Ah, uh, it's cut off. That's unfortunate. Let's go with the long one. Greenwald, old chum, I do believe we found our culprit. Would you kindly do me the honor of taking oh, well, me at least into he's... custody? It'll be my pleasure, Chester. Another case sold for Chester Cornfield. Chester, read by a contagious agent, contracted from Betty Sue's undercooked chicken dinner, spent four weeks in quarantine. There he's fed a steady diet of scotch until the poison killed every malevolent bacterial cell in his body, along with several other cells that weren't malevolent. He was soon back in the street solving capers the old-timey way. Everyone else got better very quickly, and the great epidemic of 1906 never happened. Chester and his friends went on to solve much more interesting cases in the years to come, from saving the Central Park from murder sources to the time somebody stole Wall Street's gravity. To the greatest battle against the Prohibition, nothing stood in the way of the favorite old-timey sleuth and his old-timey comrades. <laughs> so until next time, join us for another exciting adventure of Chester Cornfield, Old Timey Detective. That was actually a pretty good game. Pretty short, but still still great. We'll wait until the end. There we go. Two Chris is working on it, huh? Alright, well, um This is an excellent game. I actually very, very very much liked it. Um like I said, short, quirky, great sense of humor. Um, a little rusty, but I thought, all things considered, that was that was awesome. Uh, look forward to anything else. Okay, it just closed automatically. Uh, so I hope there's more to come from this. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun to play. Um, for those of you who know me, know that I kind of lose steam pretty quickly, and I have gotten to that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a like, subscribe would be amazing. Link to the game down in the description below. Please play it yourself. See if I missed anything. Or very well could have been some secrets or something I missed. Y'all have a great day. I, Mr. Blubberbutter. We'll see you later. Bye.